Welcome everybody. So this video is going to be on QTL analysis. I'll explain what it is, what it means, why we do it, why it would be useful. Okay, here we go. So QTL analysis. What is QTL analysis? It's basically a statistical method that links phenotypic data and genotypic data in an attempt to uncover the genetic basis of variation in complex traits. So we're trying to understand what genetic locuses are playing an important roles in the complex traits or a complex trait that we're interested in. Um, and why would we do this? So we would do this to simply discover the locations in the genome that are important for this phenotype of interest. Uh, this will become much more clear when I give an example very soon. So what do we need to perform a QTL analysis? Actually, you don't need too much. You need two individuals of whatever species you're interested in who differ in the phenotype phenotype of interest. So, for example, if you're studying the color of fish, you would want one fish perhaps that is yellow, you would want another fish perhaps that is blue. Okay, what's next? Next we need knowledge of the molecular markers in the species of interest. So, mo molecular markers are what we are going to use to see what genetic locuses in this species have a relationship with the phenotype that we're interested in. Um, two types of molecular markers that we could use are SNPs and microsatellites. But in order to do QTL analysis, we're going to need some knowledge of what the common SNPs or microsatellites are in this species we're studying. Okay, so that was a lot of information. Let's go to an example to make this a little more clear. Okay, so let's go step by step. So let's say you are a tree biologist and you are really interested in what's causing, um, what's causing these trichomes, these little green lines. Here are uh, trichomes. They're basically little um, things on the end of pine needles of a tree. So you're interested in what is what in the tree genome is causing these trichomes and what, what's controlling um, the trichome phenotype. Uh, we have no idea. So how are we going to solve this problem? In here, we're going to use QT analysis, QTL analysis and see what we can learn. Okay, so we take one individual. He, this tree has a ton of trichomes and probably comes from a population of trees that also had a lot of trichomes. So he's probably true breeding, which means that um, he, probably he's homozygous at the important locations that cause um, high trichome concentration. And then we have another individual who has uh, very few trichomes. So just like I just explained, we have two individuals who differ in the phenotype of interest. In this case, the phenotype of interest is trichome density. So if this tree has high trichome density, this tree has low trichome density. So the next step of QTL analysis is we're gonna cross these trees together to get the F1 generation. So the, and this is the parental generation, this is the F1 generation. In this case, when we cross these two trees together, we get an F1 generation with trees that have a medium amount of trichome density, okay? However, if we study these trees, we would get, we, our entire F1 generation looks like this. So it wouldn't be very helpful to us because we wouldn't be able to compare the trees with lots of trichomes and compare the trees with not as many trichomes and see the differences in their genomes. So this generation isn't really very helpful to us. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take two individuals from the F1 and we're going to cross them to get an F2 generation. Now this F2 generation looks much more interesting to us. So looking at this F2 generation, we've got trees with extremely high trichome density, we've got trees with medium trichome density, and we've got trees with low trichome density. So we've got a whole range of our phenotype of interest, and this is a great start for our QTL analysis. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, by sequencing, or there, there are many ways to do it, but we're going to look at the molecular markers in the genomes of our F2 population. And we're going to try to figure out which molecular markers are related to the trichome phenotype or which molecular markers always show up, for example, in these trees with high density trichomes. And then maybe that will tell us that somewhere near that molecular marker is a gene that controls trichome density. So let's see how this works. So what I'm about to show you is chromosome 6. We're just looking at chromosome 6 of our F2 generation um, we've, uh, we've sequenced all of these F2s for the molecular markers that we know about in trees, and here's what we get. How do we interpret this graph? So the x-axis of this graph is chromosomal uh, location of the SNP or molecular marker. The y-axis of the graph is a probability score. And every single value on this graph is the chance that the molecular marker, the probability that a molecular marker at this location is highly correlated to the trichome phenotype. Okay, so for example, let's look at, so for example, the molecular marker here that is at around 35 centimorgans or 35 map units so that's the same thing so a SNP or molecular marker that is around 35 centimorgans is probably has about a 60% chance of being um, near a gene or SNP that controls or influences trichome density. Um, so that's how you can interpret these types of graphs. So what's the most interesting point on this graph? Well, it's this point, of course. So this peak here represents a, a molecular marker, a SNP in this case, because we're looking at SNPs, a SNP at around 20 centimorgans or 20 map units on chromosome 6. And this SNP has a greater than 90% chance of being important or located near um, a genetic locus that controls trichome density. So, okay, we understand that. How would we, how would we get this value? How do we make sense of this in terms of the trichome, in terms of the tree genomes? So probably what gave us this very high value here on this graph is that the trees with high trichome density have, at this SNP here, have one certain SNP represented by blue here, while the other trees with lower trichome density have a different SNP represented by red here. So just looking at this, we can tell there is a clear correlation between this blue SNP and high trichome density and this red SNP and lower trichome density. So this is all telling us that this location here where the SNP is at, so that's around 20 centimorgans or 20 map units on chromosome 6, is either is close to a genetic locus that influences trichome density. So that's how we would go about interpreting this. And this is only looking at chromosome 6. You would probably look at every chromosome 
um, in the in the tree genome, and you would go about and you would find these locations that are highly correlated with uh, the phenotype of interest, which is trichome density. And then what you can do after this, this is this is pretty much the end of QTL analysis. What you could do after this is you could investigate the locations, each location that you find that has a high correlation with the trichome phenotype, and you could perhaps find the gene or genes, genes because it's a complex trait, the genes controlling the trichome density. So that is how you would perform a QTL analysis, and by doing this we can find the places in the tree genome that are controlling trichome density, um, and then we can continue to learn more about uh, the mechanism and uh, how it works in more detail. So I, I hope this was helpful. Thank you.